Hey, welcome back to the Car Doctor channel. I'm Tim. I appreciate you coming by. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, today we've got a special treat for those of you uh, needing to replace the starter motor on a Honda Element. This is a Honda Element. This is a 03 model. So replacing the starter can be an in-depth process. It calls for removal and replace, well, R&R, uh, &R, the intake manifold, to access the starter. However, I'm going to show you some quick tips and tricks get this baby out in a little less time without removing all that stuff. We're going to go underneath though and uh, I have the use of a four post lift that's going to give me a little more clearance. You can still do this uh, laying on the ground, put some jack stands under there. Always want to be careful when supporting a vehicle and working underneath it. Make sure you're on a good flat surface. Um, be careful. Make sure your jack stands are quality units and uh, you're on a stable surface. A lot of times asphalt driveways are eh, a little iffy. You don't want one side of your jack stand digging in and tipping over and a vehicle landing on you. Another thing to consider is do you have the radio code? Replacement of the starter requires disconnecting the battery positive feed and that's going to uh, put the radio into lock mode. So uh, before you do that make sure if you uh, talk to your customer and get your radio code before disconnecting the battery. There is a way to do that uh, after the fact, but it's always better to anticipate what you're gonna need to do before you get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the positive battery cable, then I'm gonna lift the vehicle here, and we'll get started underneath. These vehicles are known to have starter problems. Uh, you wanna make sure you're using a quality remanufactured part or a, a new part. Uh, definitely recommend OE on this one. If you can at all afford it, go with the OE. Uh, but if not, um, Napa has a line of new starters. If one of those is available, I'd probably go with that. Uh, but you want to go with quality reman. There's a lot of problems with the reman starters reported on these. Um, so uh, at, at any rate, uh, also you want to always pay attention to the uh, grounding of this vehicle since it goes through the body ground to complete the circuit for the starter. Um, the first body ground is right here. Uh, just about eight inches away from the battery. Make sure that's good and clean and tight and then uh, you can also want to make sure your battery terminals are clean as well. Always want to test your battery to make sure but uh, odds are you're here because your starter's bad. It's a common problem. So we've gone ahead and tucked that negative cable out of the way so that you don't have a complete circuit and now we can raise it up and get going on the starter removal. Okay, we'll get started on the underside by removing the little plastic skid plate underneath. It's got a couple screws and a couple little uh, retainer clips, little plastic clips, but uh, you wanna make sure and uh, pull this off and then put it back on. It's there to protect the underside of your vehicle from small animals or children should you run over them while texting. Okay, we got that out of the way, and you know, we're getting closer. Hey, every time you do one of these, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money. And with that savings, you know, you should go out and buy your mechanic some beer. Most mechanics like beer. A lot of them like it a little bit too much. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's safe to say that buying your mechanic a six pack of beer because you've saved money doing it yourself by watching The Car Doctor on YouTube is a great gesture. Okay, your next step is to remove the knock sensor located up just under the intake there, pull the connector, and then remove that knock sensor out of the engine block. That'll give you room 
an access starter, which is just kind of buried up in here. Here's kind of a view from down below. Uh, the outer bolt on the starter is easy enough to get from here. Let's see if we can see it there. But the inside bolt's a little bit trickier. So that knock sensor is going to both give you a little more clearance to get your wrench back in there and get a socket on that uh, 14 millimeter starter bolt. It's also going to give you a little more clearance to get the starter out. I'm also going to disconnect this compressor clutch wiring just to give me a little more additional space underneath the vehicle here to access these components. After I've got the connector released, I'm going to go ahead and use an inch and sixteenths wrench to loosen the knock sensor. I realize it's a metric uh, size socket, but uh, hey, whatever works. You don't want to drop the knock sensor when you're removing it. They have a crystal inside of them that helps register engine knock, and if you drop it, it could damage the crystal. So be sure to take care when you're removing the knock sensor from the engine not to drop it. And there we go. One knock sensor. We'll set that aside. Now we can go about disconnecting the starter mounting bolts. Okay, now we need to remove first the blind bolt behind the starter on the back side. And it actually sticks out about three inches from the uh, mounting face of the starter. Okay, to access the rear bolt, it's a 14 millimeter head and I'm using a deep 3 8 drive snap-on six-point socket to access it. And I'm attaching it to the snap-on long-handled flex head 3 8 ratchet. That's going to allow me to get behind that starter and get the rear bolt out. You want to take that bolt out first and then uh, once you've got it loose and you just take it out with your fingers, then you can pull the front bolt and then you can access the, uh, the battery cable and the starter solenoid wire for removal. And then the starter will weasel out the front of the vehicle. See if you can see the bolt behind the starter in my inspection mirror there. That's where it's located. And that's where you need to get your socket on there. Okay, now we can access and remove the lower starter mounting bolt. I'm just using a 17 millimeter deep socket with my uh, wobbly extension on it to gain access. Hopefully. Now I'm just removing the little clip that attaches the wiring harness to the uh, back side of the starter here. Now once you have the little wiring uh, disconnected from back of the starter, go ahead and rotate it towards you and then remove the uh, main battery cable takes a 12 millimeter short wrench 
you pull the little boot back and just uh, remove that nut. And once you got that off, you can just uh, tilt the starter back and up and drop the nose cone of it down. And pull that baby out. Well, there you have it. Um, it might save you a little bit of time, especially if you have a hoist and you can do it from down below. Uh, or if you have some patience and you have some time on your hands, it might work better for you doing it from the top side and just removing the intake runner there and accessing it that way. It's definitely a lot easier to get out from above. Uh, so if you have problems in confined spaces and uh, you don't have all the, all the cool tools, then you might want to consider doing it that route. But this worked good for me, probably saved me a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna reverse the procedure to button this thing up. And I wanna thank you for stopping by the Car Doctor channel. It's always a pleasure to have you. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and stay up to date with the latest Car Doctor videos. All right, take care and have a good one.